devastated three sites in London. Authorities are asking residents to remain in their homes as the situation continues to develop. We have received no official casualty total, but it is expected. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff Haynes, I'm the Senior Editor of Video Games at Common Sense Media, and I'm here with a look at some gameplay features of Watch Dogs Legion. It's a game that came out on October 29th for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Google Stadia, and Windows PC, and it's getting some graphical and gameplay enhancements for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. Now, quick note of warning for parents, there's going to be some scenes of violence and some mature language in this video. Some of this can be tweaked within the game's settings, and if you're looking for more of what exactly Watch Dogs, Le Watch Dogs Legion contains, be sure to check out our review on commonsensemedia.org. Watch Dogs Legion is set in a futuristic London where everyone has a neural implant that allows them to interface with their technology in a lot of interesting ways. It connects as a cell phone to have you uh, call people without needing a particular device. You can in interact with augmented reality displays from businesses or corporations or, or government agencies. But it also has a side effect that the government has the ability to see and observe everything that you happen to be doing or any piece of technology you're interfacing with at any point in time. Clearly that's an invasion of privacy and liberty. So DeadSec decides to spill the beans on this government secret by launching an operation to reveal exactly what the government's doing. Unfortunately for them, a rival hacking collective known as Zero Day uh, sets off a series of bombs across the city of London and frames DeadSec for it. That leads the government to not only launch operations against DeadSec members, but also call in a private military corporation known as Albion to supposedly restore the peace. Unfortunately, as you see right there, uh, Albion really isn't that interested in peacekeeping. They're a little bit more authoritarian than a lot of people believe, which leads to a lot of civic unrest. Tension is at an all-time high. People aren't entirely sure who to believe in. They don't really trust Albion. They're really having trouble believing in the government, but they also don't necessarily know what happened to DedSec because they simply vanished. They don't know if DedSec actually is a terrorist organization. They're not sure if DedSec happens to be fighting for them and trying to reveal what actually happens to uh, everybody's lives, especially when it comes to technology. That's where players come in. You are basically trying to rebuild and revitalize the London DedSec chapter, but instead of actually playing as a named, identifiable character like you do in a lot of other video games that have their own specific motivations and backstory, you play as Anybody that happens to be on the streets of London, that means that anyone that you see from the fitness instructor here to the dancers, the video game designers, the bankers, anyone that happens to be a citizen on the streets of London could possibly be an operative in your cause to expose what's going on within London. That gives you a lot of flexibility because every single person has their own individual skills, their motivations, and, and their reasons for joining the DedSec Collective. It also gives you a lot of uh, access as well because you have a range of different ages of people that you can use. So the little old lady that happens to be uh, feeding pigeons in the park could be an amazing robotics expert. And of course, who's going to necessarily believe that a grandmother is possibly a hacking uh, collective member? Now, in this case, we're going to choose Gia, who happens to be a photographer who has a, an axe to grind against Albion, which gives her a little bit of an advantage if she ever has to face off against Albion guards. She causes a little bit additional damage whenever she gets into a fist fight with them. Now, we're not going to show off uh, any of the story missions of Watch Dogs Legion. Obviously, that would kind of spoil some of the surprises that are included, but we wanted to show off a little bit of what you can do in the game itself. For instance, the Bare Knuckle Underground Fighting Leagues. Now, these are uh, locations that are scattered around London that are a little bit uh, under the radar, and it has a lot of advantages for DedSec members. For one thing, it raises the notoriety of DedSec amongst the population because they understand that all of a sudden there's a new uh, up-and-coming uh, person on the scene that is essentially uh, building their, their notoriety in these leagues, these fighting leagues. Uh, it allows you to get money because obviously you have all these people that gather in these locations. They bet on who they think are, is going to uh, succeed within a certain boxing match or or, or fight, but it also gives you the opportunity to recruit people that you defeat. Uh, this happens to be a one-on-one -on -one fighting match within this slaughterhouse, but in some bare-knuckle fight uh, rounds, you might face off against anywhere between one and four people, some of whom will bring weapons, and depending upon who you uh, defeat, you may choose to recruit them at a later point in time, which is really useful, especially because if they're 
fighting in these leagues, they're clearly resilient or have the ability to throw a punch or a kick, which might be useful, especially if you happen to be uh, infiltrating a place and you want to basically uh, throw down or, or lead to fisticuffs. Let's move away from that and into a stealth mission that kind of goes awry. As you can see here, this operative has a cloaking device that allows her to kind of escape immediate detection, but sometimes you really do kind of need to uh, go hand-to-hand -hand combat or even possibly uh, use firearms. Now by default, Dead Tech members don't actively try to kill people, they usually try to incapacitate them with non-lethal weaponry. Uh, so you could see this this particular op has a, kind of an electric uh, stun pistol that shoots electrified rounds. But depending, but depending upon who you happen to have, uh, whether it's a criminal, uh, a former spy, maybe even a hitman, they'll bring their tools of the trade with them to your particular dead sec chapter. So they might have automatic rifles, they may have handguns, and it'll be up to you to determine whether or not you want to uh, use stealth and infiltration and non-lethal methods, or if you want to go into a location guns blazing and eliminate anybody that you see around you. That kind of leads me to one of the points that I have about uh, the violence within the game. Obviously, uh, you have the opportunity to pick and choose based off of your own personal playstyle and how you want to clear a mission, but there are going to be some cutscenes that you just can't avoid it. There's going to be a few scenes of shooting, stabbing, there are a couple of plots that revolve around organ harvesting, and in this particular case, with this mission, as you can see right here, where we're going to do an augmented reality reconstruction to see what happened in this uh, operation uh, salon. Obviously, there's a lot of detritus, there's a lot of blood scattered around the room. It's not exactly uh, a place that instills you with a lot of confidence about what's going on. And what you discover, especially within this mission, is that this immigrant detention center is actually, uh, aside from the, the obvious issues of detaining immigrants by and of itself, the people that are running the center are chipping and tagging the people there so they can keep track of them. Obviously, the person that was being tagged fought back, which leads to some of the detritus and the blood around the room, but it also gives you a sense that things are definitely not uh, on the up and up here. It's very nefarious. Um, the augmented reality reconstructions also gives you kind of a hint as to what you may need to... Might may need to do within certain missions. Uh, depending upon when you've managed to make it to a location, you'll be able to figure out what happened a few days, a week, maybe even a month before, which gives you a hint as to what kind of lead you need to pursue, where you need to go next within your your mission, or who, who your next target might be. Um, obviously, it also can sometimes give you uh, some scenes of, of violence as well. Uh, and if you're listening to some of the audio track in the background, you're also possibly hearing some of the profanity and the swearing. There's a lot of uh, British profanity that you might hear within British media. I'm not going to go into uh, the specifics of that now, and like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, some of that can be tweaked and uh, controlled and, and uh, adjusted down. Uh, there are also, uh, to get into some more of the uh, mature elements of, of the gameplay, there are some missions that deal with uh, drugs, drug running, and uh, your safe house for DedSec is actually situated underneath a pub, so you may find uh, some character that are in different states of inebriation, and your members can also partake as well, which will also affect the screen and kind of blur it as they drink a pint or two oh, at their so particular pub. Now we're coming up on the end of this video, but I wanted to show one quick as aspect of the game, which is uh, the hacking aspect. As I mentioned, every single person has a neural uh, link to technology, which gives them a lot more uh, comfortability and facility with technology in, in the world around them, but it also can be used for uh, different methods. As you can see, there was a billboard promoting Albion, but as Gia and the other members of DedSec know, they're not exactly uh, on the people's side. So in this particular area of Camden, we're going to hack that billboard, letting the people know that it's time for them to rise up against the private military corporation and reassert their own uh, rights and and. Uh, reassert themselves as being free from Albion's control. So. To do that, we have to get access to the server that happens to be on the rooftop. One of the interesting things about doing these missions, trying to disrupt this propaganda, trying to liberate this borough, is that it, it gives us access to a couple of different uh, elements that we can then use in further missions. For one thing, it gets us access to new technology. In fact, as Gia is scaling this rooftop, she's going to see this little package over here, which will give her some tech points, which she can not only use to acquire new skills, but also different equipment that she can use on further missions. 
patient, she and other members of DedSec. Completing this mission will also get us access to other missions that will solidify DedSec's uh, access or, or control of this particular borough and its liberation, but it will also uh, demonstrate that the people are kind of tired of of some of the lies and the deception that they've basically had foisted upon them and they're ready for change so as you can see G has scaled uh, a couple different uh, fences and a couple different areas on on this roof she's gotten access to the server and instead of the Albion message that's going to be broadcast saying that it's keeping you safe dead sex basically claiming that they're never gonna surrender to their their controls so that's a really qu quick look at uh, some aspects of Watch Dogs Legion. As I mentioned, it's already out now for current and next-gen systems. For top picks and advice to fit your family, be sure to check out commonsensemedia.org.